In this video, I want to share all the different ways that I control my LEGO trains using the Powered Up system. Overall, I like the system, but it does have some shortcomings and necessary workarounds for more advanced use cases. Examples being multiple powered locomotives, or running dual motors on a single locomotive. Use cases that are critical for my layouts. Another example will be using programming to have smooth acceleration for some added realism. LEGO does provide an app that enables programming the city hubs, but that will not be covered in this video. Even when a controller is used, a smartphone must be used as an intermediary between the hub and the controller. This is a deal breaker for me. I have multiple trains and tend to use my phone for other things such as recording video. Later in the video, we'll dive into the world of pie breaks, but don't be intimidated. We won't have to do any programming. We'll be using programs from other LEGO fans. The official app does have one feature I use often, and that is loading the hub with the most recent official firmware. I've had a few issues in the past that seem to have been fixed with firmware updates. In a previous video, I mentioned LEGO didn't have instructions on their website for pairing multiple hubs to a single controller. I was either mistaken or the information has been added after the fact. Either way, I'm glad it's there. Use cases for this would be to use the A and B side of the controller to control different trains, or having multiple powered locomotives. In recent years, LEGO has been releasing passenger train sets with a single locomotive and two coaches. A welcome change from the older set with two locomotives and a single coach. This enables LEGO fans to buy two sets and have a train with a locomotive on each end and four coaches in between. If we bought two of the passenger train sets, we could use a single powered locomotive, but you may start to have issues with traction, especially when navigating switch tracks or other track geometries. And even more so if you have a cat. Looking at you, Durza. A powered locomotive on each end will help a lot with this. The only option I'm aware of is using the official controller with a direct connection to two hubs. LEGO's official app and pie breaks only support connecting a controller to a single hub at a time. And LEGO does not offer an option to reverse the direction of the motor without using the app. I solved this by turning the motor around and running the wire through the rear of the locomotive. To connect the controller to both hubs, let's start by resetting any previous connections. With the hub turned off, hold down the button until the LED starts flashing orange. Do this with each device, including the controller. Connecting the first hub should be as easy as pressing the button on the hub and the controller. To connect the second hub, press the button on the hub, and once the LED starts flashing, hold down the button on the hub and the controller briefly. They should connect. You can connect up to five hubs to a single controller using this method. Although it may be advisable to put them on different channels. With our hubs connected, we can press the button on each hub to change to different channels, indicated by the color of the LED. The controller channel can be changed with the center button. There are five independent channels available. Now let's step things up with PyBricks. While you are free to write your own programs, I'm going to be showcasing a program written by Eurobricks user Lock24. He's done all the heavy lifting for us. All we need to do is download the PyBricks firmware and the program to our hubs. I'll link the thread for his program in the description below. Let's go to the PyBricks website and open our train program. There are several settings in the top of the program, but the most important ones are the motor directions. I'm using two train motors in opposing directions, so I'll use one for motor A and negative one for motor B. I also like to enable auto acceleration. Simply hold down the direction button until the train reaches the desired speed. The program automatically detects which motors are connected, which saves the user the headache of configuring them. 
In order to connect to the hub, you'll need a device with Bluetooth LE capability. You can use a phone or a tablet or a PC or laptop. We'll start by downloading the Pybrakes firmware. With your city hub turned off, hold down the button until it starts flashing orange, but keep holding the button down and click the download firmware button. Your hub should show up as Lego bootloader. Click connect and the firmware will start downloading. A quick note, I've had mixed results using USB Bluetooth adapters. They seem to work more reliably with other powered up hubs, but can have issues connecting to the city hub using trains. I've tried multiple computers, USB adapters, and drivers, and it's been hit or miss. Once that is done and you have your settings configured, you can click the connect using Bluetooth button and select the Pybrix hub. Then press play to download and run the current program. You can then connect the controller and try it out. If there is an issue, it should show an error message towards the bottom of the screen. I'm far from an expert on this subject, but in my experience, Eurobricks is a good place to go to ask for help. If everything works the way you like, you can store the program on the hub and eliminate the need for the phone or computer. Click the settings gear in the top right hand corner of the Pybricks page and tick the box to include current program. Then use the same procedure as before to download the firmware, this time including the program. At the time of recording, there's a bug in the Pybricks firmware that makes it a real pain to turn the hub off when using a train motor on port B. It may take several attempts. When the program is running, the LED on the hub will be a solid color, red when disconnected from the remote and green when connected. Pressing the button once will stop the program and the LED will start flashing. Normally when the program is stopped, holding down the button will turn the hub off. For the time being, you can temporarily disconnect the motor from port B and the hub will turn off normally. There is a workaround to this issue that requires using Linux and a custom firmware. I will link to the GitHub page with the solution. It works for me, but it may be a deal breaker for some. One thing I almost forgot to mention. This program has two modes of operation. Pressing the button on the controller will switch to another speed profile. By default, the second mode lowers the speed control steps and acceleration, allowing for slower, more controlled movements. Again, all of these settings and speed profiles can be customized in the user defined value section at the top of the program. I hope you found this video to be informative or at least entertaining. If you have any suggestions or questions, feel free to comment below. Thank you for watching and remember to play well.